long, long time ago, but I can still remember, I got a message from Mikal, from Poland, and I'm sorry if I do not pronounce your name correctly. And Mikal said, I like your videos. I have started to do some things with pens. Can I send you something? I said, sure. I wasn't 100% sure what to expect. And shortly after, there was a mail delivery guy from FedEx. He held up the package and he said, it's from Poland! As if it was the most remarkable thing that happened to him all day. Now, I opened the package Again, not entirely sure what you expect. And there was a box, and I opened the box, and when I saw what was in it, my response was something along the lines of, what? Because I was very, very pleasantly surprised. So Mikhail and I have had some conversation, long conversation, back and forth, Instagram and email, in a nutshell. Mikhail is someone who is what we psychologists call a crazy person, <laughs> to the degree that he finds something he finds interesting, and then he dives into it completely, head over heels, figures everything out, and then that's it. Now, when I say crazy person, I say that with the most affection, most affection possible. He explained to me how he once built a car from scratch, who the hell builds a car from scratch? Jesus. Anyway, impressive though. Now, the pen we're talking about today is this pen. And what's fascinating about this pen, I opened my blinds so this is super reflective. You will see that this is not just a regularly reflective pen. This is Urushi. In other words, an Urushi lacquered pen. Common in certain Asian countries. Uh, I would say that this has been really raised to Tremendous heights in Japan. You see a lot of Arushian pens. Arushi pens are very expensive Now what Mikala is doing is bringing that art to the West, which I think is amazing And here's the thing I Have seen some Arushi pens in my life. I own some Arushi pens. I have held other people's Arushi pens But this work is very high quality because I can also tell you I have seen some Urushi work from people who are trying to do Urushi work and they were not quite there yet. Okay, that's the kindest way to put that. But this is something else. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll show you this pen next to some other Urushi pens I have so you can see that. I'll do a writing sample. I'll tell you what I like about it what I don't like about it. That's it. Mikal, thank you. You have no idea, but I'm serious. This pen I got it has been inked since. This is impressive. Let's look at this in detail. Okay, so this Tamanuri Studios pen. There's a lot to say about this pen. I'll try to keep this as brief as I can. This is the box the pen came in, which I thought was very cute. This reminds me of a 1980s business suit but that's that maybe is my strange association. So there is that, nice cute little box, and then we have the actual pen. And the actual pen is very big. Is it really? Yes, it really is. This is a Pilot Parallel. You can see that this pen is maybe a fraction longer, but it is way girthier. Okay, so what's the deal with the pens? Well, Mikal does not make the pens. He just does what well, just, I mean, that's not a, not a value adjustment value judgment, he does the Arushi lacquer on the pens. Okay, so the pen is a Ranga Model 5, and Ranga pens are made, very interestingly, in India, uh, largely by hand, and as I understand, even the threads are actually made by hand, which is impressive. Um, larger pen, right? This is a big pen, as you can see. Like, this is a pretty normal pen. So this is a big pen. What can I tell about the Urushi? Because I want to really spend some time on that because that's really what sets this pen apart, right? So it's a Tamanuri, which means that you put on a color 
on the base like a colored lacquer on the base and then you put on top of that multiple clear coats so in this case Mikhail described to me how he put on four base layers of raw Urushi then he put on six middle layers of lacquer which are pigmented then five top coat layers which are pigmented and then five translucent layers now what you have to understand is that the application of the lacquer is difficult no air bubbles etc it's difficult then after most layers there is a sanding oops a sanding process and after some layers there is also a polishing process and then you have to take into account so we had four layers base six layers in the middle that's 10 layers five top coat layers that's 15 layers then five more translucent layers after every layer uh, the, the, the pen is cured I guess the lacquer is cured in a furo cabinet okay which has a stable humility and if I remember the story correctly lower humility takes longer to cure so under the conditions of lower humility it takes longer to cure but the result is better now if you take all this into account then you start to understand why Urushi pens are so expensive it's not expensive because people are driving up the price every layer is applied by hand then there is uh, sanding then there is polishing then there is the curing of every individual layer for a certain period of time which is a process you cannot rush you cannot speed up that curing process right unless I guess you increase the humidity but you know what I mean like if it takes an hour it takes an hour there's not much you can do about that so all of that really contributes to the pricing of Urushi pens now talking about Rushi what else do I have here we have an Amiki Emperor here we have a Denitrio Genkai and here we have a Denitrio Mikado these are different types of Rushi this is the same Rushi but this particular pen has uh, discolored a bit which is what happens to lacquer over time like if you expose it to light it's photosensitive it absorbs some oil from your skin so this pen used to look like this pen but this is older so this is what you get a certain discoloration which I think is part of the charm of a Rushi right that it's like it, it, it really per, like leather it really develops a patina in my mind the lacquer job that Mikal has done is absolutely up to par with the lacquer job on an Amiki Emperor or uh, Genkai pens or um, Nakaya pens now Nakaya I think we should say I don't own Nakaya pens sorry I'm just saying Nakaya I don't own Nakaya pens but I've held a lot because I have a number of friends with Nakaya pen, with Nakaya pens and in my mind this lacquer job is also on par with that so I really want to compliment Mikhail for doing that because this is not easy stuff and he is he's really nailing it so before I go over the past the pen and trust me this was pretty much what I had to say about this we'll come to the price in the next part of the video um, Pass the pen writing sample this was what I had to say but given that this is a special product I want to spend a bit of time on that so please forgive me for that so what you may be able to see now it's very difficult to show off you see there's a bit of green in there and it has to catch the light the right way but right here you can see there is some green in that darkness you can also see there's green here and there's also some green near the back end there again very hard to make this catch the light because it's so shiny and reflective it looks like a solid black but it's not I'll try to capture as well as I can in the pictures on the post on the website okay so top of the pen finial same material as the cap same material uh, the barrel like it's the whole thing is, is the same material right so ebonite body with that arushi on it cap unscrews large cap there's definitely <laughs> some empty space in there right and then we have this pen now Mikal already said I know the nib is small could use number eight but this is a number six steel bock nib double broad and I'll be honest it's a nice nib I agree aesthetically speaking it could do with a somewhat bigger nib but we're learning right this is a learning process section tapers down flares out a little bit has this lip lip super comfortable really pleasant to hold uh, threads not sharp at all threads are lacquered as well and it works 
There's no issues with screwing or unscrewing this cap, so again, impressive barrel. You can see that green here a bit. I hope the camera is picking that up, but oh, I think that's oh, that's a good angle. Yeah, so you can see the the black and green. I think very very nicely. And again, yeah, simple Bach nib, but guess what? It writes. <laughs> that's more than we can say from some expensive nibs. So cartridge converter filled pen. Ooh, I'm running out of ink. Good thing I'm about to do the writing sample. That's pretty much it. Can you post this? Not really. Would I post on Rushi pen? Not really, right? I, I wouldn't. I would don't want to damage that uh, that lacquer. Okay, so there we go. Writing. Tamanuri Studios. I uh, don't think this pen has been named yet. So, that's it. Double BD? B, B. Steel? That's a disgusting B. I'm so sorry. And the ink is, of course, the most coveted ink on earth. Now it says Gwick, but you get the point. Nice, smooth, wet, done. Great writer. Is it big? Yes. Is it comfortable? Absolutely. And because it's all ebonite, it's not super top heavy or anything. So it's, it actually makes for a nicely balanced pen in my mind. Wetness. Well, no complaints there. Um, line variation. It's not a flex nib. It's not advertised as a flex nib. It's none of these things. So I wouldn't expect much. It's also fairly stiff, really. So just so you know. Reverse writing for those of you who enjoy such a thing. It's possible. A little bit more feedback, but it's definitely doable. I felt a lot worse. And you have this. You go from a... This is not the broadest broad I've ever seen, but for double broad, sure. And uh, I would say you can go from a really nice broad to good fine, which is actually really nice. So I think that's really nice. I think what we need to discuss next is what I like and what I don't like about this pen. And that's exactly what we're going to do. What do I like, what do I not like about Mikal's Tamanuri Studios pen? Well, I think I've, it's, it's kind of shown through that I'm, I'm very enthusiastic about this, but y y you have to understand why that is. Urushi is a complicated technique, and if someone decides to go completely overboard, because Michael sent me a, I'm sorry, I'm just saying Michael now, Mikal, sent me a, a long email with his history of Urushi, and it was very interesting, but I mean, you have to understand, this gentleman went so far as to look up a PG dissertation from, I want to say, 1906, about um, Arushi lacquers and such. He has made a study of all the different types of colors. He said it was a little difficult to classify this particular color because you know there's all these, this Aka Tamanuri, Heki Tamanuri, all these different uh, types of, of colors that you get, right? This is a similar technique as this, but it gives a completely different color because of what type of pigment, etc. these kinds of things. So I think it's really cool that someone, especially in the West, says, this is an interesting technique, I'm going to go all out, I'm going to read everything I can, I'm going to master this technique, who has done a good job in mastering this technique, because this was one of his earlier pens, so his skill level has gone up now. I think that's really neat, because it makes this type of technique, which is a masterful technique, which takes time to master, it makes this type of technique more available to other people. And I think that is really neat because that keeps these sorts of techniques alive. And I think that's really nice. We need to talk about price. I asked Mikhail about price. Now, because he is in the startup phase of his company, he kind of suggested, well, it's a little difficult to, to put prices on things sometimes. 
and I kind of pressured him a little bit because I need to be able to tell you something. He said for a pen like this, so the, what he sent me, this pen, he said I would probably charge something between 350 and 500 euros. Depends a bit on what the customer would want and how complicated the technique is because you can do other things with the Rushi too, right? Check out his Instagram profile, Tamanui Studios, I'll link to it uh, in the description. See what he can do because you can do way more visually complicated things than just this type of uh, Tamanuri finish. I personally really like this because it's so simple, but to each his own. Or her own. So I really like that. Um, I think that's a fair price. I know that's not cheap, but again, remember this entire process I explained with all the layers of lacquer, how they have to cure, how they get sanded, how they get polished every time. This is not a pen you can make in an hour. And you are buying an Indian pen, handmade pen, right? Because Ranga makes the, the Mr. Ranga makes the pens by hand in India. Yeah, there's a steel bock nib, and I'm sure you could upgrade that nib if you'd want to, like you can with many companies, from steel to gold if you prefer that. But for me, this is fine because it's a really nice nib. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I think it's a fair price. If you look at what a Nakaya goes for, and then you say, yeah, but this is not a Nakaya. I know this is not a Nakaya. But this is someone who is starting out in his own company and who's doing a very impressive job. And also, I would also like to point out, like I, I sometimes when I get enthusiastic in reviews like this, people say, you're too enthusiastic. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm enthusiastic about a product that I like. But I also very much believe in giving people opportunities. And I think what Mikal is doing here is something that is worth exposing to the pen world in a positive way. So, well done. What do I not like about the pen? Well, it isn't much. <laughs> if you follow my videos for a while, you know that this ticks a lot of my boxes. Broad nib, big pen. A Rushi is something I like. I don't have a massive Rushi collection, but I mean, it's, it's, it's a beautiful uh, finish in my mind. This pen works well. It writes well. I love the model, I love the Arushi work. I will say one thing about it, it has no clip. When you put this on a desk, it tends to roll. So do something, I don't know, put it in a cup, whatever. This is not a big deal to me. That's really all I have because in all honesty, the fit and finish are very high standards. So what can I complain about? Buy a Nikaya for a thousand dollars or buy this for 500 euros. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of what I'm getting at. So, that's it. I hope this was useful. Thank you, Mikal. We will follow your career with great interest. And I'm glad to see you later.